a wonderful way to make discoveries about the lives of animals, including ourselves, is to employ thermal imaging cameras. Here, we will be comparing what we see in visible light on the left to the very same scene as it appears in long wavelength infrared light on the right. Our kind staff member from Tree Frog Treks, serving as a representative of mammals, is holding a Pacific gopher snake. She will be a representative for the reptiles. It becomes quickly apparent that things are not as simple and are a great deal more interesting than what many of us were taught in school, at least in the early grades. It is revealed that calling snakes and reptiles cold-blooded is not really very accurate. Instead, there is a great deal more interaction between body temperature and the surrounding environment than perhaps we realized for both reptiles and mammals. In long wavelength infrared light, the image of the gopher snake largely blends in to her surroundings. The infrared camera estimates the temperature of objects based on the heating effect produced by the brightness of light it receives. It displays the result of its calculations as color. Objects of the same color means the same temperature is being estimated. The camera shows the gopher snake's temperature to be very close to the heat energy found in her immediate environment. Her body temperature is indeed very dependent on the external surroundings and the sources of heat. It is a close match. We will switch for a moment to look at truly cold objects. Here, students are holding up for the camera common freezer blocks, each with a temperature of around zero degrees Celsius. The contrast is clear with ice. As seen on the right, truly cold objects look very different. The gopher snake, she is closer to the warmth of room temperature. It's worth knowing a word that scientists today prefer to use. Rather than cold-blooded, the more scientific term is ectotherm. That refers to animals whose body temperatures are very dependent on external sources of heat and the temperature of their surrounding environment. Animals that are referred to as ectotherms include reptiles, amphibians, the invertebrates, and most fishes the ectotherms. Then there are the endotherms, animals whose body temperature has a greater dependence on the regulated activity of their metabolism inside their body. Temperature based more on heating from the inside. Birds, mammals, and some fish species make up the endotherms. With millions of species having been on Earth, and so many temperature ranges to be found on our planet, we shouldn't be surprised that nature provides exceptions. There are plenty of species that have evolved to survive in between the ectotherm and endotherm means of living. Thermal imaging technology will help the next generation of biologists and zoologists in advancing our understanding of the animal species of the Earth. These cameras are a tool worth knowing how to use well. In bringing friendly mammals and reptiles together, even more becomes apparent using the cameras. We mammals produce a great deal of heat. The brighter the infrared light, the hotter the colors that are displayed. In long wavelength infrared images, the light comes from the people and most of the objects you see. Different than visible light cameras, thermal camera images are of light produced by the animals themselves. The body images you are seeing is not a reflection of sunlight, light fixtures, or other external light sources. We make a point of including smooth metal objects in this science lab station to demonstrate a familiar property of light, reflection. In long wavelength infrared light, even an ordinary steel metal bowl, as seen here, is quite reflective of strong external infrared sources. In general in these images, what we are seeing are people's faces giving off the most light. 
Close-fitting clothing, such as t-shirts, offer some insulation and are radiating a bit less infrared. Finally, in the colors indicating still cooler temperatures are the heavier insulation clothes most removed from the skin, such as jackets and sweatshirts. The images confirm humans are among the endotherms. Our body temperature is more dependent on the heat produced by the chemical reactions inside us. We regulate our temperature more internally than the ectotherms. We endotherms usually stand out from the background in the infrared images. Whenever our surroundings are cooler than our bodies, such as the concrete walkway in this video, the background produces less long-wave infrared light than our bodies do. The ectotherms and the endotherms take a different strategy in keeping our bodies at a temperature that is comfortable and where we can function and survive. But these images can remind us that we all have limits as to what temperature and climate we can live with. Environmental temperature is important to essentially every living animal and plant species on Earth. We humans employ many tools to adjust to the surrounding temperature. Several techniques can be seen in these images. People often wear layers of clothing. In colder weather, we wear heavier clothes to insulate and keep our internally generated body warmth in. When it is warmer, we usually wear thinner clothes. As we can see with a thermal imaging camera, humans are constantly cooling off by radiating heat from our skin into the atmosphere all around us. We invite you to participate in our hands-on science demonstrations, to step into the invisible world that surrounds us all every day. Returning to ordinary visible light, you'll have gained a wonderful new experience. In San Francisco, California, as at the Bay Area Science Festival, we love exploring together science that is important everywhere for people and life all over the earth.